One December morning, Thomas whistled to all his friends, It's nearly Christmas and I'll bring you lots of letters and parcels. But a week later, the storms came. Percy was making good time on his way to the village when suddenly... What's that? called his driver. There ahead was a fogman by the line. He was holding a red light. The village is cut off by snow, he shouted. We need snow ploughs, workmen and a helicopter. Leave your trucks in the sidings and go back quickly. Suddenly, there was Thomas with Terence the tractor and the works train. Come on, Percy, whistled Thomas. Follow me. The two engines battled their way through the snow. At last, they reached the village. Harold was already there, busily dropping food to people and animals. Terence quickly got to work. Lovely stuff, he said as he pushed the snow aside. Well done, Percy. Well done, Thomas, cheered the villagers. You're the best Santa Claus this village has ever had. What's a Santa Claus? asked Percy. Santa Claus is someone who drops presents down chimneys at Christmas time. Percy looked at his funnel. I wonder if... No, laughed Thomas. Chimneys, Percy, not funnels. Which reminds me, your post train is still back in the siding, isn't it? Percy hurried back to fetch it. Just then, Toby arrived with Henrietta. We've brought lots of hot drinks and food for the villagers, he whistled. That night, all the engines had gone back to their sheds except Toby. The villagers had made a plan to thank the engines. They loaded paint pots and parcels into Henrietta, then they set off through the moonlit countryside. All the engines were fast asleep in the sheds as Toby ran silently into the yard. He had no idea what the villagers were going to do, but he knew it was going to be a big surprise. When the engines woke the next morning, they could not believe their eyes. The sheds had been repainted and decorated. Parcels lay everywhere. The engines whistled in delight and everyone agreed that it was really a happy Christmas. Do you realize it's a whole year since Mrs. Kindly saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was ill in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted Edward. You told us how she waved her red dressing gown out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Toby gave her presents, Percy joined in. And the fat controller sent her to Bournemouth to get better. But, said James and Henry together, the rest of us have never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that the fat controller would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. The fat controller had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. Thomas hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. Thomas charged the snowdrifts fiercely. Sometimes he swept them aside. Sometimes they stuck fast and the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that, exclaimed Thomas's fireman. Peep, peep, peep. Here we are, whistled Thomas. An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Terence, said Thomas. He's come to help too. Sure enough, Terence had a snowplow and was working hard to clear a path to the railway line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Percy took the tired workman home. Terence said goodbye to Mrs. Kindly and promised to take care of her cottage as he watched them all set off. 
The engines made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the yard was dark. Thomas's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said the fat controller. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are old friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Peep, 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 they all whistled. Gusts of wind swirled flakes of snow towards Thomas. Then they swooshed round Percy too. Why don't we talk about something else, shivered Percy. Yes, like how silly we look when our funnels turn into icicles. That's not funny. Maybe we'll stop feeling cold if we talk about warm things like sunshine and steam. And fire lighters, muttered Thomas. Scarves, continued Percy. Scarves? That's what you need, Percy. A woolly scarf round your funnel. Thomas was only teasing, but Percy thought happily about scarves until the firelighter came. Percy was now working hard. His fire was burning nicely and he had plenty of steam. But he still thought about scarves. He saw them everywhere he went. My funnel's cold, my funnel's cold, he puffed. I want a scarf, I want a scarf. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. Engines don't wear scarves. Engines with proper funnels do, replied Percy. You've only got a small one. Before Henry could answer, Percy puffed away. Percy was still being cheeky. His driver always shut off steam just outside the station. Percy wanted to surprise the coaches by coming in as quietly as he could. But the porters didn't hear him either. Boxes and bags burst everywhere. Oh! groaned Percy. Sticky streams of jam trickled down Percy's face. A top hat hung on his lamp iron. Worst of all, a pair of trousers coiled lovingly round his funnel. Everyone was very angry. The fat controller seized the top hat. Mine, he said. Percy, look at this. Yes, sir, I am, sir. My best trousers, too. Yes, sir. Please, sir. We must pay the passengers for their spoiled clothes, and my trousers are ruined. I hope this will teach you not to play tricks with the coaches. Percy went off to the yard. He felt very silly. On the way, he met James. Hello, Percy. So you found the scarf, eh? But legs go in trousers, not funnels. And he puffed away to tell Henry the news. <laughs> You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Huh! <laughs> Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. Next morning, Thomas's driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it, he puffed to Annie and Clarabel. But they were rather worried. I hope it's all right, I hope it's all right, they whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. Silly soft stuff, puffed Thomas. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. 
cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I am stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas. Back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The guard went back for help while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods. I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. At last, a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then, who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. Thomas collected the tree safely, but large snowdrifts lay ahead. I mustn't be late, he thought. The fat controller is relying on me. Whistling bravely, Thomas tried to move, but he couldn't. There was worse to come. Poor Thomas was snowed under. Meanwhile, the other engines waited and waited. They were grumbling about Thomas for being late. Silence, said the fat controller. Thomas left the work safely but Snow has brought the telephone lines down. We must assume he is stranded. The engines now felt sorry for Thomas, and cold but confident, the twins set off to the rescue. Suddenly, came to a drift that was deeper than the rest. Hush, said Donald, I can hear something. Probably the wind, said Douglas. Help. No, listen, insisted Donald. Over here. Look, it's Thomas. Come on, the poor wee engine must be frozen to the frames in there. When the workmen arrived, it took some time to decide how to dig away the heavy drifts of snow. Thomas's driver and fireman, who had taken shelter at a nearby cottage, joined the rescue. At last, Thomas and the precious Christmas tree were freed from the snow drift. Then they set off once more to finish their long journey. Fat Controller greeted them warmly. As a reward for all your hard work, you may go and enjoy the carols. Be quick now. At the big station, all was soon ready. One, two, three. Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. Ladies, gentlemen, and children, I give you three cheers for Thomas the Tank Engine and all his friends who have made this occasion possible. <laughs> 